Hi, this is Tom van Stippert, and I'm going to be talking about Simul today. Simul is an algorithm that compares two strings and returns the similarity between those two as a number between 0 and 1. 0 meaning completely different and 1 meaning identical. The nice ones are uh, in between where Simul might say that the similarity is 0.8, which means it's more similar than two other strings that have a similarity of 0.6, for example. Fuzzy string algorithms like Simul have interested me for a long time, and I actually wrote up an article about it in uh, this book here, SQL Server MVP Deep Dives, that came out uh, a year or two ago. If you want all the details about Simul, then I would recommend buying that book. Here we're looking at a page from the book uh, which explains how the Simul algorithm works. It's a longest common substring algorithm. And so what it does is it looks at the two words, in this case Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania spelled a different way. And it's looking for the largest substring that the two words have in common. So that's LVAN. And the length of that in word 1 plus in word 2 is 8. And then it's going to continue recursively looking at the substrings that are left. So looking on the left hand side and on the right hand side, trying to find common substrings again. It's finding pen for a length of 6. And it's finding A on the right hand side for a length of 2. And then what's left is no more similarities. And so the algorithm stops. So we have a subtotal of 16 characters in common out of a total length of 24 therefore the symbol is 16 divided by 24 is 0.67. Before I get into the details of the algorithm let's first take a look at the end result. What we have here is the Northwind database in Access 2000 MDB format. This file is downloadable. What we want to do is we want to prevent duplicate company names from entering the system. The way I implemented that is by going to a new record, entering uh, the name of your company. None of the other fields are required, so for the demo I'm just going to hit save. And now what's happening is Simul is looking at all available company names in the database and finding the ones that have a similarity greater than 0.65. So in this case it found two of them. 0.65 is arbitrary, uh, that's just the value that I chose for this demo. It's saying, Hungry Howie Night Store, is that perhaps this one or that one? The user can either click on New to indicate that this is in fact a new company or to use an existing one. If we click on New, then of course the record would be created. If we click on Use Existing, we would jump to that record so that you can continue to work with it. In this case, we'll click on Use Existing and we would go to the Hungry Coyote company. Let's take a look at how we implemented this functionality. Here we are in the customer form and we are in the before update event, which is what fires just before a record is saved. So that's the right time to go look for similar customers. So in line 10 we're saying if we're on the new record, then in line 20 we're opening the similar customers form. It is a modal dialog and we're passing in the company name that we just entered. Now that line 20, that modal dialog, will continue to run until the form is closed or it's no longer visible. And then line 30 will run and it will find out which of the buttons we clicked, whether it's new, cancel, etc. And we'll get into that. Control F6, let's take a look at the similar customers form. As I said, I put the similar threshold at 0.65. It's a little bit on the low side, but it was good for this demonstration purposes. The form open is where most of the work exists. I'm going to skip a few things that are more like eye candy, and I'm also going to skip the SQL Server implementation that we have. It's a very, in my mind, elegant way to do things, where in SQL Server you can call upon a .NET assembly to do the work. In the blog we will write about that, and all the code for that will be included in a download package. Today we're going to focus on the Access implementation. 
And our strategy there is we're going to collect an in clause with customer IDs that are above the threshold. So get similar customers is going to return that in clause. And if there is something, then we're going to create a record set object where customer ID in the ones that were found. If there are no similar customers, we need to be able to handle that too here in the else clause. And again, we're setting the record set. So let's take a look at get similar customers. Jump to the definition. Fairly straightforward form. We are essentially going to open the record set on the customer table. We're going to loop forward over that record set and we're going to call mySimil. That is the algorithm that compares the two strings, one being the one on the record set and one being the one that we hand entered. If the similarity is greater than the threshold, we want it in the in class. A little bit more eye candy and we are done. My symbol is defined like this as a function implemented in an outside DLL called symbol DLL and it takes two strings and returns a floating point value, a double. So after we call get similar customers, we can set up a record set with those customers that we're interested in, with ones that have a similarity greater than a threshold. And then we're waiting for the user to click one of the buttons, new, go to existing, etc. So if we look at new, for example, here, property that we're setting to new, and then we're setting me.visible equals false so that we fall out of the modal dialog. We do the same thing for use existing. We set the dialog result equal to whatever our customer ID is that we want to jump to. If we then come back in our main customers form, we will pick up the dialog result. And if it is new, there's nothing to do. The record will be saved. If the user selected cancel, we set cancel to true so that the before update event stops the record from being saved. Otherwise, there will be a customer ID. The dialog result will contain that customer ID, so we can do a find first using the bookmark technique. We can jump to that record and show it to the user. It is interesting to look at Tom's code and see how he did things. One of the first things I noticed was using the SQL statement for open record set to bind the data to the form, which is unusual. A more common way to bind data is to assign the SQL statement directly to the form record source property. When data is in a backend, which it usually is, it looks like the method that Tom uses would reduce timeout problems and improve performance since opening a record set keeps a connection open. At the top of the open event of the pop-up form, the similar records are found by the get similar companies function. If the SQL statement does not return any records, a standard approach might be to cancel the open event. Instead, the form is hidden, so the dialog result property remains available for testing. By not closing the form and using a global variable, the functionality of the form stays together, so integration into other applications is more seamless. The visible property cannot be set in the open event because the form is not actually open yet. Tom found a way around this limitation by using the timer event to set the visibility. If it is desired to hide the pop-up form because there are no records in the open event, Tom simply sets the timer interval to one millisecond, which immediately triggers the timer event. The timer event then sets the visibility of the form to false and stops the modal behavior. Since it has done its job, the timer event turns itself off by setting the timer interval back to zero. This is really clever. Making the form invisible to users is like closing the form. Code can still read the values. In the code behind the company's form, the dialog result property of the invisible pop-up form is assigned to a variable, str dialog result. Another trick Tom uses is searching the record set clone without setting an object variable by using with to reference the record set clone object. The record on the form is then found by setting the form bookmark, meetup bookmark, equal to the bookmark that was found by find first on the record set clone. 
Thanks, Tom. We have really learned some neat tricks, and Simul is a super cool tool.